Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 17.6.1 to the public. iOS 17.6.1 is available around the world at the same time for everyone, as long as you're not a beta tester. If you are a beta tester or developer, you won't have this update as you're on a newer version. Along with this, Apple also released iPadOS 17.6.1, macOS 14.6.1, along with iOS 16, iPadOS 16, and macOS 13 updates. There were no watchOS updates, as well as tvOS or HomePodOS updates just yet. The overall size of this update was 346 megabytes on my iPhone 15 Pro Max, so it's fairly small. So let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about. As you can see, the build number is 21G93, and it includes bug fixes in particular that resolves a major issue. But before we talk about that, Apple didn't update the modem in this particular update. So if you were on iOS 17.6, you're on version 1.70.02, at least on the iPhone 15 series. iOS 17.6.1 is also on version 1.70.02. The major thing they've fixed in this particular update has to do with advanced data protection that actually can be found in your settings, then tap your name at the top. Then if you scroll down and go into iCloud under iCloud, scroll to the bottom, you'll see advanced data protection. In some cases, apparently this was not able to be turned on. So sometimes it was either not allowing you to enable it or even disable it. Apple has actually fixed it in this update and it looks like they've pushed the same update to all of the other updates as well. So there was something preventing this from being turned on, encrypting your data and keeping it secure. Now it should work properly and work properly across all your devices. As far as other bug fixes, well, Apple hasn't said anything specifically, but in their actual update, you'll see again what I just mentioned, where it says it addresses an issue that prevents enabling or disabling advanced data protection. They haven't mentioned anything else, but some people still had issues with the standby bug. If we bring in a doc here, I'll link this in the description. We'll just lock the phone, put it in standby mode. Some people still were having issues editing this. So after you unlock, we'll go back into standby mode here, press and hold, then you can go in and edit. And again, there it verifies. Now we're back in. So it looks like it still could be a little bit buggy, but now we can edit the colors, change them however we'd like. And it seems like it's working at least for me. Let me know if this resolved it finally for you. I know this was still an issue for some people, but you can see there's definitely some odd bugs still there in 17.6.1. They've also still not mentioned whether or not they've fixed the alarm bug. However, I haven't heard anyone report this issue where if maybe you're using a sleep wake up alarm, sometimes it wouldn't sound. The other alarms seem to work fine, but since iOS 17.6, it seems to be resolved. And the same is true in iOS 18 betas. Some people had said prior to this, that there was issues with Safari loading different data. And it looks like that could have been caused by different outages that Apple was having, whether that was with different things such as private relay or others. But if we go in and if we go into Apple's website and go to learn more under iPhone, it loads nice and fast. The same is true with iPad. If we scroll down, maybe go to MacBook air, you'll see how fast everything loads. So it's definitely been resolved if you were having issues before. And I haven't heard of any complaints in this one. As far as phone calls, it seems like it's working properly. The wallpaper fading bug has definitely not been resolved, even though I thought it had earlier, it sort of desaturates everything. You can tell that on very vibrant wallpapers. So it's definitely still an issue as far as security updates. Well, if we go to Apple's security release website, scroll down, you'll see that they actually mention it here, but it says this update has no published CVE entries. So it doesn't look like they're putting any security fixes in this particular update, whether or not there are some, they're just not sharing yet, but either way, it seems like they haven't mentioned any, even if there are some updates as far as that goes. There's also no release notes other than what I shared already, as far as the actual update itself and other updates today. Well, Apple actually updated maps in real time, as far as the transit goes in Tokyo. So if we go into maps within maps under Tokyo, you can see different stations here. It's actually giving more information in real time about them with the real time transit information. So Apple's enabled that on the server side. You should see this already, even if you're not installing this update. As far as performance, well, performance seems to be nice and fast. And I'll show you that with benchmarks in a moment, but just going into things such as music, going into browse here, scrolling is smooth. If we go into the app library and scroll promotion is nice and smooth. Everything seems pretty fast and refined as you would expect with iOS 17.
As far as overall heat, well, I'm happy to report it's nice and cool. Even after installing the update, it cooled down quickly. I ran benchmarks, it cooled down, ran them again, cooled right down. I can show you that with the thermal camera as well. And at the hottest point on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, we're at about 88 degrees Fahrenheit or about 32 degrees Celsius. So it seems to be staying right within temperature ranges you would expect. It's not getting too hot for those of you that live in warmer climates. If you're wondering what the battery is like, well, this will take a few days to know that. But if we go into settings, we'll go back here. We'll go to battery, battery health. This has 42 cycles with 100% capacity. And if we go back to the battery life, well, it's only been running this for a little time here, but we have one hour and nine minutes of screen active time, 20 minutes of screen idle time. And it was last charged to 74% seven minutes ago. So it was just charged. We're down to 73%. And I've been showing this on camera as well as running Geekbench, as you can see here. So it will take a few days to measure this, but most people report on iOS 17.6 that they have great battery life. I would expect the same battery life on this update, but as far as that goes, we'll have to check that in the weekend follow-up video on Saturday when we talk about that more in depth. As far as if you should install iOS 17.6.1, well, if you use advanced data protection, I definitely would install it to resolve any issues there. And maybe there's some security updates, but either way, it's so minor, I would definitely install it. As far as iOS 17.7, well, we might not see any of those updates until September. That's when we saw iOS 16.7 last year. When it comes to iOS 18.1 beta 2, well, we could expect that either later this week or early next week. I was thinking at first it would probably be next week, but Apple's been really all over the place with their release schedule this year, so we don't know 100%. But iOS 18 beta 6, I would expect next Monday or so. That's what we've been seeing is a Monday release schedule and a weekly schedule as far as the releases go. Then public beta 4, probably on Tuesday. Then a public release, probably the third week of September. Maybe September 16th is when I would expect it. We don't know 100%, but that's what I'm thinking they'll release that on. As far as the overall benchmarks, I did run them twice on this device, and the second time was pretty great. 2,982 for single core, 7,453 for multi-core. If we take a look at the CPU history, you'll see it's higher than we had before with 17.6 here. Definitely a little bit better. So it seems to be improved. They've really refined things, and that's what I would expect at this point with iOS 17. Let me know if you've noticed any differences or found any other features. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below, and I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already, though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.